Hi, welcome to Christian Center Online. We're so glad you chose to worship with us today. Here in just a few moments, we're going to join our worship team for a short moment of worship. And I just want to encourage you like I did last week, right there in your home, just, just worship the Lord. Invite Him into your home, invite Him into your heart, and just let this be a moment to rejoice in who He is. We have an incredible uh, worship set prepared for you today. It's going to be a great time. And then after worship, I'm going to come back and we're going to worship through the Word. And so uh, we're going to move into a time of worship here in just a second. And let me just remind you, um, your giving matters now more than ever. It's so important that you continue giving. And so if you could, please visit our church website, crumbcc.church, and use the giving link. You're also welcome to mail your tithes and offerings to the church P.O. box, or you can text me and we can get a drop-off point. You can drop off a check or offering if you need to. And so thanks for all you're doing. Thanks for being the church. I've heard lots of people talking about how the church isn't closed. We're just deployed. And so we may not be in a building, but we're all gathered together in one heart and one spirit today. So worship with us today. And let's invite the Lord to have his way into our life today, okay?
that we serve a miracle working God and he is the way maker and he is not finished with us and no matter where you're at whether you're in this room in this church building worshiping or whether you're sitting at home with your family he is worthy of our praise and he makes a way where there seems to be no way and he's not done this is not the end and Philippians it says that he who began a good work in you will continue it on into completion until the day of Jesus Christ so he's not done Christian sinner he who began a good work in Christian sinner is not done so I challenge you this morning for just these last few moments would you just lift your hands in the presence of a holy God would you stand in awe of him would you bow to your knees and just join me in worship of our God who is the way maker he is the light in the darkness and whether you can feel it or not he is not a God of emotion but he is a God of facts and the facts is, is that he is not done and he is making a way where there doesn't seem to be one let's just worship him together this morning Jesus we thank you there is no one like our God. God, you are the way maker this morning. And I pray that you would move inside of every living room and every home as we just worship you right now and tune our hearts to you, Jesus. Isn't that great to worship with part of our worship team? And aren't you glad God is the way maker? He makes a way even when we don't realize he's making a way. I love that song where it says, even when, he's work, even when I don't see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. And I want you to know right now, whatever's going on in your life, God's working. So keep trusting God. He's faithful and he's going to make a way. Amen. You believe that? I believe that. Hey, listen, boys and girls, it's time for you to go get your Legos. Go get your markers, your crayons, your paper. It's time for you to kind of be a part of the sermon today. And so go get your stuff. And when you come back, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. And we're going to have a project to work together, okay? Hey, before we spend some time in the Word, I always like to just start with a word of prayer. So right where you are, there at your home or your office, wherever you're watching today, would you bow your heads and let's ask the Lord just to bless us as our, with our time in the Word today. Father, we just thank you today. God, you're so good. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you for your grace that is so empowering and so strengthening. And thank you for this time we have to come together and to worship through the word. Father, we just ask you to uh, let your presence fill every place that this sermon is being viewed right now. And let every heart be open and receptive to your word today. Anoint me as your servant to speak with boldness as the Holy Spirit leads. And let your word accomplish everything you've desired it to accomplish in every heart, in every life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are continuing our series, The Lego Principle. And this series comes from a book that I'm reading by Pastor Joey Bonifacio called The Lego Principle. And it's about connecting. And several have asked me, why are we doing this Lego series? And I got to thinking, you know, in the time that we're in, there's a lot of things we could talk about. But right now we're all struggling to connect with people. All the huggers in the world are just looking for someone to hug. All the handshakers want to shake a hand. How long has it been since you gave a high five? You know, virtual high fives aren't, aren't the same as real high fives. We need to connect. And so I just felt this was a great opportunity for us to talk about connecting and, and learning some, some qualities about relationships. You know, Legos, they come in all shapes and sizes. As you can see, these are some of the, the Lego buses that the kids made last week. And, and by the way, boys and girls, I loved every one of the Lego buses, every drawing. Y'all are such great artists. You're so creative. You're so imaginative. And I've got another project for you today, but you're doing a great job. And I love displaying it like the little steering wheel. Every detail that these kids have is amazing. And Legos... They come in all shapes and sizes and colors, but all Legos are made for one thing. They're made to connect. A Lego that doesn't connect isn't any good. Legos have a purpose and it's to connect. And once you begin connecting Lego bricks, the sky's the limit to what you can build. You just have to use your imagination. Well, the Lego principle, as we've discovered, is this. Connect first to God and then to others. We connect first to God and then to others. To others. And so we're going to continue this line of thought about connecting to God and connecting to other people. Hey, boys and girls, it's time.
here's what I want you to do today. You've done such an amazing job. You've built me a church. You've built church buses. Today, we're going to stretch you just a little bit. Today, we're going to build a bridge. I want you to build a bridge. Use your imagination. It can be a small bridge. It can be a large bridge. Whatever you want to do. There can be people crossing the bridge, cars crossing the bridge. There can be boats going under the bridge. Whatever you want to do, use your imagination. And if you're drawing, use that imagination. And so get to work as you're listening to the, the sermon today. And remember, if you don't finish before the sermon's over, it's okay. Just finish when you can. And mom and dad, make sure you get a picture of your kid's creation and send it to us. We want to see how your kids are getting involved with the Lego principle and all these buildings they're building. Well, this series, we've been examining and we've been starting with a, a teaching that Jesus taught. Some religious leaders came to Jesus and they said, what's the greatest commandment? And Matthew records it in Matthew 22, verse 37, where Jesus, it says, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, Jesus said. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Jesus is making an important point to his listeners. Life's all about relationships. And our most important relationship is our relationship with God. And after that is our relationship with other people. You know, just like Legos are designed to connect at the top and the bottom, you and I are designed to connect at the top and the bottom, at the top to God, at the bottom to other people. And I've told you for the last two weeks, and I want to remind you again, the secret of Lego is not that every brick has the, uh, not, it's not that every brick connects to the same number of bricks. It's that every brick has the capacity to connect. Every individual, every person, you have the capacity to connect to God and to connect to others. The truth of the matter is, sometimes we don't connect to God because we just don't want to. Sometimes we don't connect to other people because we just don't want to. But we all have that ability to do that. And whether you believe this or not, we all need to connect to God and we need to connect to each other. And so I want to I want to start today and today's uh, today and then the next three Sundays. I want to examine some building blocks of relationships, because no matter the relationship, there are some fundamental building blocks that apply to every relationship. And there are different approaches to relating to people. People are different. And it takes different approaches to relate to people. But there are some basic building blocks that are essential to every relationship. And for it to be healthy, there must be these building blocks in that relationship. And they are this, trust, love, forgiveness, and communication. Today, I want to talk about trust. I want to talk about trust. Trust is the foundation of relationships. Every relationship has to be built on trust. In fact, think about, is there somebody you don't trust? How good is that relationship? How close is that relationship? You know, some people, they struggle in their relationship with God because they say, I don't trust God. And when you don't trust God, your relationship becomes fragile and brittle and unhealthy. Trust is the foundation of every relationship. In fact, I wonder, do you really trust God? You ever notice how easy it is to say we trust God when we're in church? But hey, guess what? Here lately, we can't be in church. So here's my question. Do you still trust God even when you're not in church? Do you still trust God even when you're not around God's people? Because he's still trustworthy. We should live every day knowing that God is trustworthy. I like to say it this way. Um, people say, well, how do you know God is trustworthy? And I have to say, sun came up, God's trustworthy. Sun went down, God's trustworthy. Every day the sun comes up, I know I can count on God. He's faithful and he's trustworthy. But I looked up a few scriptures to help us understand the value of trusting God. And I love Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. This, this passage of scripture applies to so many areas of our lives. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. I love that verse. Notice what it said. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. I never can understand what God is doing. But here's what I've learned. I don't have to understand to trust God. I can trust God even when I don't understand. Psalm 9 verse 10, the psalmist says, Those who know your name trust in you. For you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. When you know God's name, when you know his character, when you know who he is, you trust him because you know he's trustworthy. 
And then Isaiah 26, 3 and 4 says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. When we trust God, he keeps us in perfect peace. Like, can I challenge you? If you're worried right now about our current circumstances, about this pandemic we're in, can I encourage you? Don't, don't focus on fear. Don't focus on everything people are talking about, but put your trust in God and say, you know what? No matter what, God's going to be God. He brought me to this day. He'll bring me to tomorrow. He'll get me through this day and take me to tomorrow. He'll still be God tomorrow. I can trust him. He's my rock and I'm firmly planted on him as my rock. And then I love Psalm 56, three and four. It says, the psalmist says, but when I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? And I love this little tag he has in verse four. What can mere mortals do to me? I trust in God. Why should I be afraid? What can any mere mortal do to me? As we grow in our ability to trust God, it helps us to grow in our ability to trust other people. If we struggle to trust God, we're going to struggle to trust other people. And if you find yourself in a relationship where you can't trust the person you're in relationship with, that relationship is not healthy and it will never be healthy until you develop trust. You learn to trust the people you're in relationship with. And it's hard to trust people if you don't trust God. So I want to I wanna examine today. Um, I told you trust is the foundation of relationships and I want to examine five Lego bricks of trust. The five Lego bricks of trust. And I brought some Lego bricks, some really big Lego bricks to help you see there at home. It's for the camera. The first Lego brick in trust is the letter T. That stands for truth. Truth. See, truth is the foundation of trust. Now, I told you, trust is the foundation of relationships. Truth is the foundation of trust. If people aren't truthful, you don't trust them. Well, I want, I want people to trust me. Be truthful. When you're truthful, it means you're honest. You're not deceptive. When you speak, you speak the truth always. It's never a lie. It's never a half-truth. It's the truth. Truth is a foundation of trust. I love what John writes in 1 John 1, 5 and 6. He says, this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. Listen, for we have to practice the truth. We have to live a life of truth to develop trust. Practice truth. Develop trust. People today many times have given up on truth because today a lot of people feel no one can be trusted. Well, we need to reestablish trust. I think about this. There are some marriages that are on the verge of breaking apart because in that marriage, somebody feels like they can't trust the other partner. There are relationships between parents and children that are fragile because parents feel like they can't trust children or, or children feel like they can't trust parents. And there are siblings who can't trust each other. And there are friends. And we go on and on and on and on. It's time for us to reestablish trust. And the, you begin to reestablish trust by being truthful. Being truthful. Have you ever heard the statement? Trust takes years to build, but seconds to destroy. Trust takes years to build, but seconds to destroy. We must value trust. We must value truth. We can reestablish trust through truthfulness. You know, I feel like no one in our world today is looking for perfect people because there are no perfect people. And I feel like instead of looking for perfect people, everyone's looking for truthful people. Who will be real? Who will be truthful with me? The only way to consistently walk in truth is by having a relationship with Jesus Christ. In fact, I'm going to be as bold to say, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are probably not walking in truthfulness. Because he is the truth. In John 14, 6, he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is truth. And so without a relationship with him, without walking in unity with him, we aren't going to understand truthfulness. But as we draw near to God, as we connect to him and we're truthful with him and we build a relationship with him, it helps us to be truthful with other people. Because think about this. When you are in a relationship with God and you're becoming 
intimate with God, knowing God and God know, he already knows who we are. There comes a point you have to be truthful with yourself because God already knows what you're thinking. You have to be truthful with God. And so we're learning to practice truthfulness in our relationship with God. It spills over into our relationship with other people. And so truthfulness comes through knowing Jesus. Being truthful is a building block for trust and for building deeper relationships with people. When we're truthful, our relationship has a deeper bond, a tighter bond. The second building block in trust is the letter R. And that stands for reliability. Reliability. Are you reliable? God is the ultimate picture of reliability. We can trust God because his character is proven and it's constant. I love what scripture says, Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. He, has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? God's not going to lie to us. God's not going to change his mind. He's constant. He's consistent. I love Joshua 21, verse 45. Scripture says, Not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came true. Isn't that amazing? Joshua said, everything God spoke came true. All the promises God gave. He gave promises to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. He gave promises to Moses through the burning bush. He promised Israel that Abraham would have an inheritance. The nation of Israel was born. Everything he said came true. As Israel was in Egypt in slavery, God was still keeping his promise. As God anointed Moses and brought Israel out of Egypt and they spent 40 years wandering through the desert, God was still faithful and God kept his promise. Listen, no matter how long it takes, God will keep his promise. We sang that song, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. That's who our God is. He's a promise keeper. If God said it, you can take it to the bank. He will do it. Well, when's he going to do it? Don't worry about timing. Just know he's going to do it. You know he's He's consistent. You can trust him. He's reliable. Then I love Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promise. God is reliable because he always keeps his word. You ever thought about this? You and I, we become unreliable when we, when we repeatedly say we're going to do something and we don't do it. You know, like, Hey, I'll call you tomorrow. Hey, I'll text you next week. How are you? I'm going to get to that at some point. Or how about we say, yeah, let me make that appointment. I'll, I'll be there on Thursday when you know you're not going to be there on Thursday. Or my favorite is this. It's our Christian excuse. I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for you. Did you know when you tell somebody I'll be praying for you and you don't pray for them, you're showing that you're unreliable. And we love to say that when we talk to somebody, hey, how you doing? And they begin to tell us how they're doing and we weren't expecting them to unload their whole problems on us and we're feeling awkward and we're feeling uncomfortable and we go, well, I gotta go, but I'll be praying for you. And what that is is code for like, I'm uncomfortable, don't wanna talk to you, I gotta go. But you know what? What if we stopped doing that and we instead started saying, hey, you know what? Let's just pray right now. Like I'm trying to be the kind of person that I don't tell people I'll be praying for you. I'm the kind of person I'll say, let's pray. And I pray for them. And then I say, I will continue praying for you. In fact, just the other day, I saw one of my friends and I said, how are you doing? And he said, oh, things could be better. And he began to explain to me what was going on in his life. And I listened because I care. And when he finished explaining, I said, you know what? You got a minute. Let's just pray. Now, it was kind of awkward because when I pray for people, I like to put my hand on their shoulder. I like a point of contact. And I was like, you know what? I can't get within six feet of you because social distancing. So let's just blend our hearts and let's pray. But I prayed for him and for the need that he had. And I told him, I'm praying for you. I care about you. See, when we follow through with what we say, we're reliable. Now, listen, what we're talking about being reliable, I want to also remind you, be careful when you say yes to things you should say no to. Because saying yes to things you should say no to makes you unreliable. And on the flip side, saying no to things you should say yes to shows you're unreliable. Well, how do I know to say yes or no? I don't want to be unreliable. You pray about it. Earlier this year, I had a friend. He was inviting me to, to, to go on an adventure with him, to go on a trip. And I explained to him I wasn't able to go. 
And he thought something was wrong. And so he said, well, why, why aren't you going? Is everything okay? And he was very concerned that maybe there was an issue or a problem. And I finally had to say, listen, there's no issue. There's no problem. I've just decided in 2020, I'm going to be more selective in what I say yes to and more selective in what I say no to. And this trip you have is an amazing opportunity, but it's not for me right now because I had let, I had asked God to lead me and show me, God, what should I say yes to and what should I say no to? Because I want to be a person who's reliable. It's the same in your life as well. Make sure you're saying yes at the right time and no at the right time. See, trust isn't about little things or big things. Trust is about being reliable in everything, in everything. You know, when you tell somebody, hey, I'll pick you up in the morning at 8 o'clock, be there at 8 o'clock. When you tell your boss you're going to be at work at a certain time, be there at a certain time. When you tell your spouse, I'm going to be home at a certain time, be home at a certain time. Be reliable. I love how Jesus taught on this subject. In Luke 16, 10, Jesus said, listen to this, this is great. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. In other words, Jesus is saying, if you do little things well, you'll do big things well. But if you can't do little things, you'll never do big things. See, our little acts of reliability, like Lego bricks, build trust. The third building block in trust, we have T, we have R, and then we have U. And U stands for unity. To have unity means to be united or joined as one. Just like I'm joining these Legos to spell the word trust, I'm joining multiple Legos together as one. I have three Legos that are now one. They're in unity. To be unified, to have unity, means to be integrated. To be integrated means that each part combines to become a whole. It's an integer, a single digit. Integer is the root word of our word integrity. We can't have unity without having integrity. Trust is impossible without integrity. Trust is impossible without being unified. How do we learn to be unified? How do we learn to have integrity? We go to God. God is unified. God has integrity. God is one. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. God is unified. He is one. He has integrity. He is consistently himself. I love what scripture says in Malachi 3, 6. I, the Lord, do not change. God is so consistent, and God is one, and there's such unity that God doesn't change. And James told us that God doesn't change like the shifting shadows. He's consistent. He wants us to be the same as well. Today, I was thinking about this passage of scripture. and When Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, it was the night he was betrayed and he was about to be arrested. And as he prayed this amazing prayer, and you should read John 17, it's a great prayer. He prays for you and he prays for me. And in verse 21, listen to what Jesus prayed. He said, Father, I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. Jesus said, Father, let there be let us be integrated. Let there be unity. Let us be one. Let there be integrity that we're all together. We all have the same mind. We're all operating for the same purpose and the same plan. And that's our father's plan. You know, the world has become wary of Christians because oftentimes there are a lot of Christians, their behaviors don't match their beliefs. If your behaviors don't match your beliefs, you don't have integrity. If you say you believe God, if you say you call yourself a Christian, but you do things that speak otherwise, you've just discredited yourself to everyone around you. You don't have integrity. Integrity is being who you are, is being real. Listen, we cannot say we believe the teachings of Jesus and live differently. Either we walk with Christ or we don't walk with Christ. You know, Jesus prayed there and he said, he said, Father, I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one. When Jesus walked on earth, there was no doubt that he was uniting with the Father. Jesus would say things like, I only say what I hear the Father say. I only do what I see the Father do. He was uniting with the Father. And yet there are people today that call themselves Christians, but they are not united with God. They're not walking with Jesus and doing what Jesus wants them to do. I was reading the other day, about King David's life. And as King David's life was coming to an end, 
He understood the kind of life that pleases God. In and, and, and 1 Chronicles 29, verse 17, listen to what David says. He says, I know, my God, that you examine our hearts and rejoice when you find integrity there. King David knew that God rejoiced when he found a man or a woman who had a heart of integrity. That's what the world's looking for. And when you and I become people of integrity, it helps build trust in people's lives. There is only one way to live a unified life of integrity. Trust Jesus Christ as the sovereign authority in every area of your life. Is Jesus Lord of every part of your life? Have you heard the saying, if Jesus isn't Lord of all, he's not Lord at all? Let me say that again. If Jesus is not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. See, Jesus doesn't take part-time Christians. He doesn't want to be your Lord part-time. He wants to be your Lord all the time. In fact, I love what Jesus taught in Luke 6, 46. He said, why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? Man, we have a lot of people in our world today that call Jesus Lord, but don't do what Jesus said. And people like that, cause the world not to trust Christians. When we live like that, we break down the trust that the world has for the church, for Christians, and for God, and we see relationships begin to break down. It's only as you and I surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ that we're then able to live a life of unity and integrity. So we have truth, we have reliability, and we have unity. And like the studs on Lego bricks, these are the connectors that allow us to build relationships with each other. Then the fourth building block of trust is the letter S, and that stands for standards. Standards. Listen, trust cannot be accomplished without standards. No matter the relationship, standards are what form common ground for the foundation of trust. Now think about this. God is a God of standards. Scriptures tell us that God is holy. God is trustworthy because his standards are much higher than ours. Peter says in 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. S- holiness is not something we, we do. It's a standard by which we live. I'm not holy, but God is. And I'm trying to live my life with standards that reflect God's character and God's nature and God's holiness so I can be like him. And I want to tell you, a lot of days I fall short of that standard. It's not about being holy. It's about working to be who God wants you to be and modeling your life after who God is. Holiness is unattainable. It's not attained by our own abilities or our self-righteousness. Holiness only comes because of what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus went to the cross for us so that we could be holy. I love how Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, and he says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we may become the righteousness of God. God gave his perfect son to become sin for me and for you so that we could be holy. You know, there's a principle that Bible scholars use as they're studying scripture and interpreting scripture, and it's called the principle of first mention. And the principle of first mention means that when a word is mentioned for the first time in Scripture, you should pay attention to that. Pay attention to the context because it will help you understand the definition and the meaning and the substance of that word. Well, guess where the word holy is first mentioned in Scripture? Genesis chapter 2, verse 3 says, God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. The first time God mentions holiness is a day of rest. He created for six days on the seventh day. He said, this is a holy day. I'm resting from my work of creation. It's the Sabbath. He gave us a Sabbath. You ever thought about the purpose of a Sabbath is for us to rest and to connect with God? Why do we have church on Sunday? It's the first day of the week. It's the Sabbath. It's a day that most people are not working, that we can rest and we can spend time with God. See, holiness is not about trying harder. Holiness is about resting in your relationship with God. And the more we spend time with God, the more his standard of holiness becomes evident in our lives. Holiness is not something we can produce. Holiness is produced in us as we spend time with God. The more we spend time with God, the more holiness is produced in our life. So see, standards matter in relationships. Some think that the key to having a great relationship is being popular. But the truth is, 
It's not about being popular. The key to a great relationship is trust. And trust is developed through standards. So we've looked at truth, reliability, unity, and standards. And the last building brick to build trust is the letter T. And that stands for time. Time. Truth takes time to develop a relationship. Reliability takes time. Unity takes time. Standards take time. Time is the foundation of trust. So it's truth. We, everything takes time. Time is the proving ground for truth and reliability. Time proves our unity. Time shows that we can adhere to standards. And time demonstrates everything we do in our life. Time determines what is real. Trust is established over time. You ever met somebody new and thought, I don't know about them. Happens all the time. I've never met somebody and went, man, I just trust them. They just seem so trustworthy. You don't know if somebody's trustworthy until you get to know them. It takes time to find out if somebody trustworthy. But can I tell you, God is trustworthy. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, the the key to connecting with God and with others is not just the passage of time. The key to connecting with God is what is truth, what is reliable, what is unity and standards, what things are being lived out on a consistent basis in that person's life. Is that person trustful? Truthful, excuse me, truthful. Is that person reliable? Do they have integrity, unity? Do they have standards? Time will tell me all those things. See, trust is about connecting with Jesus. Jesus passed the test of time consistently, and he wants us to pass that test as well. Building relationships is, is, is connecting in an atmosphere and a culture of trust. Trust can only be built around other people. It's not built by ourselves. Now, each Lego brick, as you build with Legos, they come with studs, the little bumps at the top. They're called studs for those of you that didn't know about Legos. And these studs give the Legos the ability to connect. And what you may not realize is each Lego stud has the Lego name stamped on each stud. When you pick up a Lego brick and it says Lego, you know there's a quality toy in your hands. There are generic Legos that are cheaper. But one thing I've discovered with my kids is generic Legos don't connect like real Legos do. And I've discovered too that generic Legos, when you try to connect them to real Legos, the connection is not as strong. When you know the Legos are the real thing, you're going to have a quality project you can build. Now, the generic ones are okay, too. Sometimes we got to save money and buy our kids toys that are affordable. In fact, these other companies have tried to, cop- to, tried to copy Lego bricks, but without success, because the connection is strong when it's the original thing. It's the same in our relationships. When we're the original, when we're the real thing, our connections are strong. When we are truthful, when we are reliable, when we live with integrity and have that unity, when we have standards, when we let time prove who we are, we have a strong connection and people can trust us. See, like Lego bricks, we connect best when we're the real thing. Are you the real thing? Jesus wants us to be the real thing. Hey, would you bow your heads and let's pray today as we conclude our time together. Father, I thank you today. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us words in the scripture to teach the Lego principle to realize we need to have a foundation in every relationship of trust. We need to be people who are trustworthy. We thank you that we can trust you and teach us to be just like you. Father, I pray for those who are, who are watching today, who are listening today. Maybe they realize their relationships are not what they could be because they haven't been real. Maybe the truth is there's stuff they need to let go of. They haven't been truthful with themselves or truthful with you, and, they, and you're working in their heart today. Would you bring them to a point of surrender, a point of repentance so they can let go of those things? They could be truthful with you and truthful with themselves and let you bring healing to their life today. Father, maybe there are those who have been hurt, and as a result of being hurt in a previous relationship, they have a hard time trusting others. Today, let today be their day to find freedom in Christ. Today, as they've spent time with us together in this sermon, and today, as they've blended their hearts and we're praying right now, maybe you're showing them and just bring them to a place they can say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that hurt to God and let God bring healing to my hurt, and I'm going st- to put myself out there again, and I'm going to learn to trust people. With God's grace, with God's help, I'm going to learn to trust people. God, would you heal those hurts and help them learn to trust again?
And Father, I pray for those who have been listening today, who have been watching, that maybe they realize that they need to trust Christ Jesus as their Savior. Maybe they realize that the problem in most of their relationships is they don't know Jesus. They've never surrendered to his lordship and made him the sovereign, supreme ruler of their lives. And God, right now today, in each home, in each office, in each car, wherever people are listening, would you allow the Holy Spirit to draw men and women, to draw students unto you and to bring them to a place of salvation, that salvation is found in Jesus. And help us to see how you are trustworthy. You are truth. You are reliable. You have integrity. That unity is there. You have standards, and you've proven yourself over time. God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for all you've done. God, teach us to be just like you and help us to build healthy relationships and learn to make the foundation of our relationships trust. Lord, have your way in each heart and life today. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks so much for worshiping with us today and joining us with our time in the Word. I hope you're being blessed by these, by these sermons. And I want to remind you, uh, please uh, remember, your giving matters so much right now. And so take an opportunity and go to our church Facebook page, crumbcc.church, and click on the Given link. And hey, if you're watching on YouTube, right down there, that little red circle that says subscribe, click on subscribe so that way you're ready to go next time. Well, hey, boys and girls, how'd you do? How are your bridges? I can't wait to see them. Finish your bridge, finish your picture. Get all the details done and have mom or dad take a picture and either text it to me or put it on our church Facebook page. Hey, we love you. We're looking forward to seeing you real soon. You guys have a great week, okay? God bless you.